Welcome back to another video. In today's video, we will be looking at building a house value prediction model using various machine learning algorithms. The data set used for this model is the California Housing Dataset from Escalon. I had initially planned to create this tutorial using the Boston Housing Dataset, but then when I checked up with Escalon's website, it is mentioned that Scikit-learn discourages the use of Boston Housing Dataset due to some ethical issues, and as an alternative, they have suggested the California Housing Dataset. You can find out more about this from the website. Before moving forward, I would highly appreciate if you could take a moment to hit the like button, smash the subscribe button and turn on bell notification so that you don't miss any updates. Stay tuned. So first let's import the required libraries. Okay, so we have imported NumPy and Pandas for basic data operations. We have imported Matplotlib and Cbonds for plotting the graphs. We have imported train test split to split the data into training and testing set. We have imported standard scalar to perform feature scaling. And then we have imported the different models that we are going to use, that is linear regression, decision tree and random forest. Then we have imported the various accuracy matrices to measure the model accuracy and evaluate the model performance. Now let's load the data from sqlearn. From sqlearn.datasets, import, fetch, and then you'll get fetch California housing. Now we have loaded the data. Now let's look at the available description of the data. And if you run it, we can get the available description of the data. Now this gives the description of the data such as what each column name indicates, the number of instances, the number of attributes and the target variable. Now let's convert it into a pandas data frame. And let's pass in our data and let's add the column names we have dot columns feature names and let's view the data using the head function there we have our data now let's add the target variable median housing val house val And now let's use head function again. So now we have our data with the target column. Now that we have our data, let's perform some exploratory data analysis on the data set. Let's use the info function to get some more information regarding the data set. So df.info. As we can see, the info function returns us the column names along with the number of non null values and the data type and size of the data set. We can also use the shape attribute to find the shape of the data set. And this gives us the shape of the data set. We can see that there are no null values in the data set by looking at the info function. However, if you want to check for null values explicitly, we can use the is null sum function. Df dot is null dot sum. Now this will give the sum of null value if any of them are present. Now to view the statistical details of a data set, we can use a describe method. Df dot describe.
And as we can see, this returns a count min, max, mean, standard deviation of a data. Now let's plot a histogram to see the distribution of the data. Let's set the figure size. Let's add the number of bins. I'm setting as 30 number of bins. And an edge color. If you want to know more about creating and plotting histograms in detail, you can check out more on this topic from my visualization playlist. I'll add a link to it in the description below. From the histogram, we can get an idea about the distribution of our data. Since we have the geographical data of our houses, let's create a scatter plot to see if the location of the houses has some effect on the median housing value. So first, let's set the figure size. Let's create a seaborn scatter plot. So our x-axis will be the longitude. Our y will be the latitude. And the hue will be a median housing value. and its size will be set by the median housing value. And let's set a color palette. And let's set the transparency value by setting the alpha parameter, 0 0.5. Let's add a legend to our plot. Now let's specify the location of our legend. And finally, let's add a title for our plot. As we can see, the location of the house has some effect on the median housing value. But this alone is not enough. So let's create a correlation matrix to find the correlation between the different attributes. Now to find the correlation, we can just type in df.cor and this will give the correlation between the different attributes. But it would be easier to visualize this data. So let's plot a heat map of the correlated data. See bonds here now. I'm setting the annotation to true to see the correlated values inside the heat map. And let's add a title to a heat map. If you want to know more about creating customizing heat maps, you can check out my video on this topic in the visualization playlist as well. I'll add a link to it in the description below. And as we can see from the heat map, the median income, the average rooms, and the house age has high correlation with the median housing value. Now, if this is confusing, we can also print out the values in ascending order of correlation. To do that, we can just type in df.core. Sort values. Now we can see the attribute in ascending order of correlation. Now let's create a scatter plot for the most correlated attributes. Let's start with the median income. So see one scatter plot. So our x data will be the median house income and the y data will be the median housing value. Similarly, let's create a scatter plot for average rooms. Now 
Now that we have done some data exploration, let's prepare the data for building the model. So let's split the data into x and y. So for the x data, we'll have to drop the median housing value. So to do that, we can just type in df dot drop. So we're dropping the target column from axis equal to one and we are putting the target column in the y data now let's create a training and testing set and i'm taking a test size of 30 percentage test size of 30 percentage and I'm setting a random state. Now let's print the size of the training and testing sets. Now there's one more step to do before creating the model that is to standardize the data. So we use feature scaling to normalize all the independent variables or features of the data so that any one variable will not be dominating the model that we create. So here we are using standard scalar to transform the data. So let's load standard scalar and let's fit transform the X train. And let's transform the X test data. Now that the data is transformed and ready, let's proceed to build and train the model. So let's first train the data on a linear regression model. So let's load the linear regression model. And let's fit the X train and Y train of the linear regression model. And then let's predict a value for a given X test data. Now let's evaluate the linear regression model performance. To do this, let's calculate the mean absolute error, mean squared error and R2 score. So first we'll calculate the mean absolute error. Mean absolute error. Mean absolute error of Y test and the predicted value that is linear regression pred. And similarly we'll do for mean squared error. Mean squared error of Y test and the predicted value similarly let's calculate the r2 score the r2 score is a metric that tells the performance of the model and is usually in the range of 0 to 1 now let's print these values Now let's train the data on the decision tree model.
So similar to what we have done in linear regression model, we are first loading the decision tree model and then we are fitting the data. Then we are predicting the values for a given test data. Now let's evaluate the model performance as before. So the prediction here will be the decision tree prediction, date tree pred, date tree NME, NSE, okay so comparing the linear regression model with the decision tree model. The mean absolute error has slightly improved whereas the mean squared error and the after score has no much improvement. Now let's train the data on our random forest model. So similarly as we did for the other two models, we are first loading the random forest model, then we are fitting the X-ray and Y-train data, and then we are predicting the value for a given test data. Now let's evaluate the random forest model performance. So when comparing the random forest model with the other two models, the random forest model performs better on the given data set. Now that we have trained and tested the model, let's predict the median housing value for a new given data. So let's create a sample data for that. So let's first get the column names. So I'm just populating the data. Okay, now that we have a sample data, let's set an index for this data. Now let's put it in the pandas data frame. And let's see a new data. Oops, I forgot something here. Yeah. Now that we have a new data, let's predict its median housing value. So I'm going to use the random forest model as it gives the best model performance. And let's print the predicted value. And if you run the cell, we have the median housing value for the new data. That brings us to the end of this video. Hope you got an idea about creating house value prediction model using machine learning algorithms. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you found this video useful. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.